There was only one founder who signed all four of America's founding documents. He signed the Articles of Association in 1774, the Declaration of Independence in 1776, the Articles of Confederation in 1777, and the U.S. Constitution in 1787. Who was this man? This man who was so interwoven in America's freedom documents. His name was Roger Sherman. And at the age of 19, Roger Sherman's father died, and he supported his entire family as a shoe cobbler, helping two younger brothers attend college and become clergymen. Roger Sherman was a surveyor and a merchant. But when a neighbor needed legal advice, he studied to help. And then, because of helping others, he inspired to become a lawyer. Roger Sherman was elected a state senator, a judge, and a delegate to the Continental Congress. He was on the committee to draft the Declaration of Independence, along with Jefferson, Franklin, Adams, and Livingston. He helped draft the Articles of the Confederation and the instructions to an embassy in Canada, which stated, You are further to declare that we hold sacred the rights of conscience, and may promise to the whole people solemnly in our name the free and undisturbed exercise of our religion, and that all civil rights and the right to hold office were to be extended to persons of any Christian denomination. On October 17, 1777, when he heard of the British general surrendering over 5,000 troops to American General Gates at Saratoga, Roger Sherman exclaimed, This is the Lord's doing, and marvelous in our eyes. Roger Sherman made 138 speeches at the Continental Convention and helped draft the New Jersey Plan and the Connecticut Compromise, which broke the deadlock between how the large states and the small states would be represented. Patrick Henry described him as one of the three greatest men at the Constitutional Convention. Roger Sherman is the author of Article 1, Section 10 of the United States Constitution. No state make anything but gold and silver coin a tender in payment of debts. Roger Sherman wrote in 1752, For money ought to be something of certain value it being that whereby other things are to be valued. No government has the right to impose on any of its subjects currency to be received in payments as money which is not of intrinsic value, because in doing so they would oblige men to part with their estates for that which is worth nothing in itself and which they don't know will ever produce him a thing. Roger Sherman helped Connecticut to ratify the U.S. Constitution and was elected to the first session of the United States Congress. When the First Amendment was introduced, he thought it unnecessary, as religion was under each individual state's jurisdiction. In 1788, as a member of the Whitehaven Congressional Church, Roger Sherman was asked to use his expertise in reviving the wording of their creed. In his own handwriting, he wrote, I believe that the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments are a revelation from God, and a complete rule to direct us how we may glorify and enjoy Him. That He has made man at first perfectly holy, that the first man sinned, and all became sinners in consequence, and on account of sin are liable to all the miseries of this life, to death, and to the pains of hell forever. I believe that God did send his own son to become man, die in the room and steed of sinners and thus to lay a foundation for the offer of pardon and salvation to all mankind, so as all may be saved who are willing to accept the gospel offer. Elected a U.S. Senator at age 70, Roger Sherman died on July 23, 1793. The state of Connecticut placed his statue in the U.S. Capitol and on the outside of their Capitol Hill in Hartford, Connecticut. Inscribed on Roger Sherman's tomb is, He ever adored the profession of Christianity, which he made in youth, and died in the prospect of a blessed morality. Roger Sherman also said, I believe that there is only one living and true God, existing in three persons, the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Ghost, the same in substance, equal in power and glory, that the scriptures of the Old and New Testament are a revelation from God, and a complete rule to direct us how we may glorify and enjoy Him, that He made man as first perfectly holy, and that man sinned, and as He was the public head of His prosperity, that all became sinners in consequence of his first transgressions, are wholly indisposed to that which is good and inclined to evil, and on account of sin are liable to all the miseries of this life, to death and to the pains of hell forever. I believe that God did send his own Son to become man, die in the room and steed of sinners, and thus to lay a foundation to offer the pardon and salvation to all mankind so that all may be saved who are willing to accept the gospel offer. I believe a visible church to be the congregation of those who make a credible profession of their faith in Christ and obedience to Him, joined by the bond of the covenant. I believe the sacraments of the New Testament are baptism and the Lord's Supper. I believe that the souls of sinners are at their death made perfectly holy and immediately taken to glory, that at the end of this world there may be resurrection of the dead, and a final judgment of all mankind, when the righteous shall be publicly acquitted by Christ, the judge, and admitted to everlasting life and glory, and the wicked will be sentenced to everlasting punishment. Roger Sherman also said, God commands all men everywhere to repent. He also commands them to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and has assured us that all who do repent and believe shall be saved. God has absolutely promised to bestow them on all of these who are willing to accept them on the terms of the gospel. That is, in a way of free grace through the atonement. Ask and ye shall receive. Whoever will, let them come and take of the waters of life freely. Him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Roger Sherman also stated, It is the duty of all to acknowledge that divine law which requires us to love God with all our heart and our neighbor as ourselves, on pain of eternal damnation, is holy, just, and good, and revealed law of God is the rule of our duty. True Christians are assured that no temptation or trial shall happen to them but what they shall be enabled to bear and that the grace of Christ shall be sufficient for them. In the Washington Globe on August 15, 1837, it was stated about Roger Sherman, the volume which he consulted more than any other was the Bible. It was his custom at the commencement of every session of Congress to purchase a copy of the scriptures, to pursue it daily, and present it to one of his children on his return. This is the story of Roger Sherman, the only founder to sign all four of America's founding documents.